Sports Talk Chicago. Herbert Johnson Glowell and we are back and ready for today's special guest. He's the senior content manager at Rust Street Interactive and the Bet River Sportsbook. Please welcome Troy Macker to the program. Troy, it's great to have you on. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. It's uh, you know, exciting time. It ramped up for football season, and uh, yeah, it's it's a good time to be a sports fan and a sports better. So Troy, let's start with the Bears as we talk about football season. What do you make of them being plus two ten for a playoff spot? Uh, you know, I, I think it's adjusted a bit based off of the amount of action that we take on the Bears. Uh, you know, I think if you look at uh, the NFC North uh, odds and how the public has been betting, it's been uh, more split than you would imagine. I think a lot of that has to do with the, the Packers offseason. It's not for, you know, Aaron Rodgers, will he, won't he? I think you're looking at the Packers being backed by a lot more money and a lot more bets, but the public really didn't get around to wagering on the Packers until late July. So, uh, you know, the Vikings, who have one of the best running backs in the NFL and Dalvin Cook, they got some love. The Bears uh, will always get some love uh, at Bet Rivers because, uh, you know, we are so strong in the Midwest. So, uh, you know, I think that the odds and the numbers are a little bit more even than you would anticipate, uh, especially given that the Bears don't know who their quarterback is. They, they they are telling us they know who their quarterback is in Danny Dalton, but I don't <laughs> think anyone wants to believe it. Um, and, you know, so it will be really interesting to see how it plays out. I'm really fascinated by the NFC North this year. Uh, and that's not even – we haven't even mentioned the, the Lions, who have a new quarterback, who – and the Lions could be better than I think people anticipate uh, just because that, that division could be all over the map. How could the Bears' odds change based on the quarterback? Like, if they put in Justin Fields, how do you expect the line to move? That's a really interesting question because, well, uh, Justin Fields is, you know, uh, leading the pack in terms of bets and handle to win rookie of the year. We have a lot of Justin Fields action. Uh, he is still a rookie who has never played in the NFL. And while uh, the public is critical of Andy Dalton, he is a longtime veteran quarterback who has made playoffs. Certainly he hasn't won a game, uh, but he he led to the, the Bengals to – five or six playoff appearances. Um, so I would think there would be adjustment uh, away from the Bears just because you're, even though you think uh, Justin Fields may have a higher ceiling than Andy Dalton, and I believe most of us do, uh, he doesn't have the experience. Um, so you don't know what you're going to get. So I would expect if Justin Fields comes in week three, week four, to see um, a sharp adjustment in how the lines are being set on the Bears. Do you think he surpasses 3,000 passing yards and 16 touchdowns? I know those are pretty prominent prop bets for field this season. Do you think he gets there? I would say no, just because unless uh, Matt Nagy is is pull, running us uh, through the ringer and is hoodwinking all of us. And I, the only reason I, I say no on, on Justin Fields reaching those numbers is how, we are unsure of how many games he will play. It could be uh, 10 plus. It could be um, four or five. You know, if Andy Dalton has a, a strong start and the defense leads the way, they're just going to let him game manage and, and plow through it. So I think um, if Justin Fields is playing every game, I like him to reach those numbers. But I am unsure, and I think most people are unsure, of how many games he'll play. Do you think he deserves to start right away? If you were Matt Nagy, would you put him in? Oh, okay. So, yes, I think I would. But there's there's two schools of thought. You, if you draft high uh, – and you're you're saying, hey, well, we 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 don't think he's going to be ready until week three or week four. What's three or four weeks? You know, uh, if he's going to be ready in week four, he's probably close enough to being ready now. However, part of that could also be we have 17 games this season. The offensive line uh, is a bit of a nightmare, um, and it's more about protecting your asset long term from a health standpoint. You don't want Justin Fields to get injured, um, and maybe it's going to take three or four weeks to figure out the consistency on that offensive line. So there are two schools of thought. I myself would play Justin Fields. If, if if I saw during the preseason he is meeting his marks and learning the playbook and all that, which I think we can all agree he has done a pretty good job of that. He had a very good performance and a not-so-good performance in the preseason, but I would go with Justin Fields um, to learn what you have sooner rather than later. Now, again, you know, you want to help minimize injury, but at the same time, it's the NFL. And as soon as you step on the field, the injury risk is there. Um, so, you know, they could wait five weeks, eight weeks, and then the, on the very first snap, you could get injured. That is, a, a, you know, just part of the NFL. So I would start Justin Fields because you drafted him high and he's looked very good. Troy Macker here on Sports Talk Chicago. Troy, what excites you about Fields in this game? 
his playmaking ability, uh, his, uh, you know, he, he doesn't have the world's greatest arm talent, but he can sling a good ball. And I think more than anything, his poison IQ. Uh, uh, this is a guy who <clears throat> can be a leader, a natural leader, is a great guy to be around. Uh, and that's the guy you kind of want, you know, ducks on a pond where below the surface, uh, you know, his feet might be moving a mile a minute, but above the surface, he's calm, cool and collected. And I think he also just had franchise talent. Uh, and that's what you need at the quarterback position. You need someone that is going to make the defense readjust everything they're doing. And I think he does that. Now, again, can he throw the types of passes that Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady can throw? No, he can't but I think he can do all the things in between. And again, he is such a good prospect because of what's going on in between his ears. And I think that is super valuable when looking at the next uh, step and progression of a young, talented quarterback. Is he the savior for the Bears, Troy? Will they finally get the quarterback position right with Fields? I, he's the, I think he's the guy. You know, if, if you're looking at the quarterbacks in this class that they would have had the opportunity to get, um, you know, is thinking that, you know, they weren't going to get Trevor Lawrence. I really like Justin Fields, you know, uh, he's got a good size. He's maybe not the biggest quarterback in the world, but he can move with his feet. Um, he, I think he is the type of quarterback that you need to draft. If you want to solidify that franchise position, which the bears haven't had since, uh, Jim McMahon. I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> How far do you think they go if Fields comes in week four and, Stays in for the rest of the year. I mean, is is this a playoff team? I think it is. I I think it's. Uh, I wouldn't peg them as a division championship contender uh, or or outright championship uh, winner for the division. You know, I think they're looking at a wild card. Um, you know, uh, nine and eight, something like that, or eight and nine. And I think I would not be surprised. You know, with seventeen games this year, if you have a wild card team, especially from the NFC, get in there at eight and nine. Um, you know, uh, kind of like the NFC East last year where we had a team with seven and nine. Uh, I think they will be in and around 500. I, I think a lot of that has to do with just the, their defense. You know, this is this is a team that can take a risk at quarterback because, you know, uh, Mitch Trubisky was decent, bad, good, had a great game, bad again. And yet they were still in the playoffs last year because of that defense. So I think they are going to be in the hunt for the playoffs. I would not peg them as... Um, my pick to win the NFC North, but I, I would not be surprised in the slightest if they make the playoffs because the defense, they have uh, talented players and skill positions, and they have a, a high level, talented young quarterback. So do you see him going over seven and a half wins? Oh man, that is, that's, if they want to make the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if, uh, you know, um, I, I think, you know, what they do in their first four games and what they do in their last four games is super important. I think if they get off to, a, a, you know, at least 50, uh, 500 start uh, with Dalton, um, that will set them up for success. Um, but, you know, if you if you want to hit your overs, it really, for me, it's your first four games and your last four games because, um, you know, uh, in between there is bye weeks and really figuring out who you are. But in the NFL, there's no time to waste and you have to finish strong. So you've got to get out of the blocks quickly. And then you got to make sure that everything's all your, uh, you know, eyes are dotted and your T's are crossed, uh, you know, in weeks 15, 16, 17, 18, when some teams are injured, preparing for the playoffs, focusing on next season, you got to win the games that you can, and you got to win some games that maybe people wouldn't peg. Troy Macker here on Sports Talk Chicago. Troy, who's your favorite for NFL MVP? Man, uh, I, this is boring, but I would say Patrick Mahomes. I think he's the best player in the NFL. Uh, a lot of people are on Josh Allen, and I'm not going to criticize them. He is exceptionally good. Uh, you know, I was laughing at people who, who took Josh Allen at plus 6,000 last year, and he was probably the runner-up to an MVP. The reason why I'm not leaning towards his direction this season, he has to replicate that again. And now the expectations are there. Stefan Diggs has to have a, if not a, a good, if not better season than he did last season. Uh, and the Bills haven't had repeat success in what seems like two decades. So, uh, well, I think Josh Allen could be the MVP. I'm really see, uh, I got to wait and see with him, which is why you can't go wrong with Patrick Mahomes. Weapons across the field, uh, IQ through the roof, makes plays uh, every which way, um, you know, and, and I'm not, can, I'm not ready to, 
think that Justin Herbert with a new co- uh, new coach is going to make that massive leap. If you're really looking for someone, uh, you know, I don't think repeat winners are going to happen. Aaron Rodgers, no. Tom Brady may win a Super Bowl again, but I don't think he's going to win MVP. Dak Prescott coming back from injury. Kyler Murray, for me, is that next step. If we've seen Lamar Jackson win an MVP and we've seen Patrick Mahomes win an MVP, and now he has not just um, – you know, uh, DeAndre Hopkins, but A.J. Green, you know, a, a solid running backs. I think if you're if you're looking for someone in the middle of the pack who is going to make that next step and become the next face of the NFL, it's probably Kyler Murray. Uh, that division is very tight, very competitive. And if they, uh, you know, can can win that division, I think a lot of people will be looking at Kyler Murray because, you know, all those teams, of the division can make the playoffs. How do you think Arizona does this year with those new weapons and with Murray entering a new season? I think they do really well. I'm I'm high on Arizona, uh, and do in large part because they have the 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 longest odds to win the NFC West. You know, it, it's I believe it's like plus four fifty. It's not great uh, compared to other teams that are in the fourth place position. But um, you know, the the Rams have a new quarterback, and while Matthew Stafford can sling the rock, it's a new quarterback in a new system. Uh, the Seahawks are going to be good. They always are. Uh, the 49ers for me is the question mark. A lot of people are high in them. I know they had uh, just a bevy of injuries last year. They have maybe the best tight end in the NFL, but they have two quarterbacks and one of them is a rookie. And, and if my philosophy is if you don't have two quarterbacks, if you have two quarterbacks, you don't really have one. Um, that The same could be said about the bears. <laughs> I don't think, I do not think the 49ers are going to win the division and the public seems to be leaning that way. I think Arizona uh, is right to, to finish much higher than where the public is projecting early um, prior to the season and the weapons there. And they have, they have players on defense as well. Yes. I know Cliff Kingsbury may not be the world's greatest tactical coach, but the talent is there. Uh, They have the best wide receiver in the NFL. They have the best, uh, one of the best young athletic quarterbacks that really changes how you play defense I, I i like the cardinals uh to hit the over on wins and to make the playoffs as kingsbury held them back do you think with a different coach maybe the results would be different potentially but i also think that you know uh with those players and with that quarterback specifically you need a guy who's just going to kind of let roll the ball out and let him play you know i don't know if you want to pen uh kyler murray in between the hashes um but at the same time, you know, uh, Cliff Kingsbury has been given uh, more chances than most uh, head coaches at, at high levels. And, you know, not making the playoffs last year was a disappointment. Um, I think there is some pressure on him. Uh, but again, I think that the, the vision is is anyone's for the taking. It's going to be competitive, but all four teams are good. And, you know, they have to clean up and win the games towards the end of the season when they're close. You know, they lost their last two games against teams that were playing for nothing. Um, so that has to change. Coach, he has to get them at least one win because of his coaching. That's for sure. And I know he didn't do that last year. Okay, so I saw Jameis Winston, Troy, at plus 5,000 for the NFL MVP. What do you make of that? Oh, it's fun, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> he's he's not – he won't win the MVP. Uh, we, he won't – he doesn't have the Saints' best – uh, wide receiver who's one of the five best wide receivers in the NFL, Michael Thomas. Yes, they have Alvin Kamara. Uh, he looked really good in the preseason. Um, uh, but, you know, Sean Payton is probably going to use Taysom Hill, so that's going to hurt him. And the interceptions. I, I can't imagine Winston throws 42 interceptions like he did his last season in Tampa Bay, but I think that's what's going to hurt him is he, he makes as many good plays as he makes bad plays. And those bad plays aren't just bad passes that go out of bounds or come up short or uh, turnover and downs. They're interceptions, which is, um, you know, score, leaving scoreable points on the board. Uh, I think you, you the, he is a good bet if you're looking to cash out later in the season. You know, may, I think he may surge up in the rankings uh, and his odds will move up. And therefore, if you took him at plus 5,000 and, and in week six, he's at, plus 1800 if you cash out that's money right there so i don't think he's going to win but i see the value uh in taking him because of his arm what the saints like to do uh and you know the division they play in they have a they have a a healthy schedule against teams with some weak uh secondary so i think he'll be able to make some noise is that the biggest long shot bet for the nfl this year and if not what is uh for mvp yes uh for for um a player uh, who um, is not, you know, plus 2,500 or so uh, or, or, or closer. He has more bets and handled than anyone, um, you know, and, and 
really the only person who comes close is, you know, uh, Derrick Henry, who's also plus 5,000, but you know, he would have to do even better than what he did last year or the year before. And it, it's, you know, when was the last time uh, a running back got MVP? Was it Adrian Peterson? Um, which seems like decades ago. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's really, this is, it's probably going to be a quarterback. It, it, it almost has to be um, nowadays. And so that's, you know, uh, one of the reasons why it, he, uh, James Winston has a little bit longer odds because there are just so many more quarterbacks, uh, potential you know even with you know guys like Lamar Jackson or Baker Mayfield or uh if, if Carson Wentz has uh, has a good bit of handle on him um if he's healthy so uh really interesting but I think it's good that Jameis is, is in the spotlight uh people love to joke on him he likes to have fun and I think it's just good for football that we're talking about him Troy Macker still here on Sports Talk Chicago Troy a few more questions before we finish you up first off what's your problem with G2 Okay, so I love Gatorade. I it's like probably my favorite drink of all time. Uh, I'm a, and I'm a traditionalist. I like the the yellow, the orange, the the red. I don't even call them their colors. Gatorade too, and all sorts of like I I am a Gatorade apologist. I I like there were there was a four year window where I think that was the only liquid I drank every day. I was out coaching and and working on fields, um, and. It, it is my lifeblood. G2 is disgusting. It, it tastes like <laughs> it tastes like they added melted plastic in there. It's like the Diet Coke of Gatorade. And Gatorade is so perfect. For me, get, like the, the traditional Gatorade flavors, the, the flavor is nailed perfectly. It's a, yes, it's a little sweet, but it, I could drink Gatorade and nothing else for the rest of my life. G2, is, it's so bitter and it's just I, I feel uncomfortable drinking it. And it is really, I think, because people don't like, you know, nowadays it's everything's watered down and non unconcentrated. I see G2 all over the place so much more. If I'm, you know, at an event and there's a cooler or if, you know, um, at like a, a media availability and there's a, a, you know, a walk-in cooler, it's always G2. And G2 is, in my opinion, absolutely disgusting. I think vitamin water is better than G2. And it has the same nasty Diet Coke taste <laughs> as G2. <laughs> Well, Troy, it's healthier. Don't don't you want to be healthier? No, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's the like it's the it, it's the McDonald's situation where you go to McDonald's and you get a Big Mac and a supersize it, and you ask for the Diet Coke. It's like, come on, what you you're like if you're already drinking it, why you don't need to be healthy? Like, drink water if you want to be healthy. And Troy, before we finish up today, last question: You might piss off some Chicago people here. Why is deep dish not pizza? Okay, so it's the same reason that uh, but a calzone isn't pizza. It's a stuffed pizza. Just I, like a deep dish, it's a deep dish. I, I don't think it needs the pizza designation because it's gone so far away from what pizza is. It's a pizza-like casserole. And that's not to say that it's not good. And there, there's a bone of contention where people clown on deep dish not being pizza, and that also needs to indicate that it's not good. That's false. Deep dish is good, but it's also not pizza. <laughs> It's too thick. The sauce is too sweet. Um, it, there's, you know, it, it, there's like no cheese on top. Uh, it is a very good Italian like dish. It's just like the calzone. People say it's stuffed pizza. No, it's not. It's a calzone. Uh, if it was uh, a pizza, it would be flat and not stuffed. It would be open face and everything on top. Deep dish is a casserole. It is not pizza. But I do like deep dish. I will say that I have no problem eating deep dish. But it's not Chicago style pizza. It's not deep dish pizza. It's just deep dish. Just all deep dish. Lose the pizza. Well, at least you said you liked it, so you didn't lose yeah. any uh, Chicago detractors here. Troy, thank you so much for joining me. Really appreciate the time as always, and best wishes as the NFL season ramps up. Can't wait to talk again soon. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on.